All right, so let's take a look at this. I saw several different solutions out there to, to the issues. Um, the first issue that, that most people seem to pick up on was that we get the array index out of bounds exception because when we remove an element from the list, that list now has fewer elements. Um, and so as i continues to increment and is compared against the original size of the list, um, eventually it's going to be an, an, an invalid index. One solution I saw to this, several of you did this, is well when you remove an element, decrement the size by one to account for that. Um, and that totally works and that's a, a reasonable solution. Um, what some people did and what I think you'll see is more common when you see for loops that iterate through an array list is instead of calling the size method and storing that in a local variable outside the loop is to call the size method um, every time that loop comparison is checked. Um, and so invoking that size method each and every time you compare it against i so that as the list size changes, gets bigger, smaller, whatever, um, you're always comparing against the current size of the list. So this for loop here is what you would see most often in terms of a for loop that iterates through an array list. Um, this, this is good in that if I run the code now, it no longer crashes. Um, but we do run into an issue where there's still evens in the array list. Um, and this is specifically for this bug is when I was encouraging you to work through on a piece of scratch paper and get a sense of of what's going of what's going on. Um, so for for example, if we switch here to the to the whiteboard with this sample array here, as we trace through this, i starts at index zero, i is not an even number, so i simply gets incremented to one. We look at index one, thirteen is not an even number, so i gets incremented to two. We look at index two, eight is an even number. Um, so we're going to remove it. And when we remove eight, the other elements have to be shifted into that spot. So we do it like that. And then when we get back to our for loop, we continue to increment i. i now has a value of three. And we're looking at this element here. And we skipped over the one that shifted. And that's why the pattern for the case where we miss even elements is we miss even we miss all the even elements where the even value follows another even value. That's the case where we are skipping over even elements. And so the most common solution I saw to that is to decrement i when you remove an element so that when we get back to our for loop here and i is incremented, i actually doesn't change across that iteration. Um, and we're going to look at that element that was shifted left because of the removal. Um, and then this will work as, as expected, which is great. Um, all of that said, there's another solution that I saw that I think um, is even better. Uh, and it actually goes back to this theme from last semester, which is sometimes solving a problem um, is easier when you approach it from a different perspective. Um, and removing elements from a list can be a challenging problem. So let's write a method together that shows this other solution as well, um, because I think it's really important to keep in mind throughout this semester. So we're going to write like a second version of this method here. So we'll still make it public, static, void, and we'll call it remove evens alt, like an alternate implementation of it. Um, it will still take an array list of integers called list. And the, the different perspective um, that some of you did, um, which actually solves all the issues at once, is if you iterate backwards through a list, when you're removing elements, you don't have to account for anything shifting. Um, so for example, 
if we set up our for loop such that i equals list.size minus 1, that's the index of the last element, and we continue as long as i is greater than or equal to 0, and we subtract i by 1 each time, this uh, is going to lead to a simpler solution. We still need to get the element at index i using the get method. We still need to check if it's even. That doesn't change any. But if it is, when we remove it, we don't need to do anything else. And the reason for that is when we remove the element, sure, all the other elements to the right, that is elements with higher indices, are shifted left. Um, they're moved. But we don't care because we've already analyze them. We've already scanned them. We've already handled them. We're working our way to lower index, uh, lower indices. We're working our way left in the list. Um, so keep, keep this in mind. Um, removing elements from a list comes up a lot. You can certainly handle it the previous way, but this is often a way that is more straightforward um, and therefore less likely to have bugs in it. So. While we're here, let's write one more method together. Because um, there's another feature of array lists I want to make sure uh, you have an example of. Um, and this method is going to sum all the elements in the list and return the sum of their values. So we'll create another public static method. Uh, this one will return an int, which will be the sum. We'll call it sum list. And it'll take one parameter, which is an array list of integers called list. The point of this is not so much the algorithm. We're familiar with that. It's the idea that we can use enhanced for loops with array lists just like we used enhanced for loops with arrays. So if I create a local variable sum and initialize it to 0, um, this is worth a comment. This is useful. Enhanced for loops support iterating through array lists. And this is good news because enhanced for loops um, are much easier to read, to code, and therefore less likely to result in, in bugs because we don't have to deal with indices. We can just say for int value colon or in list. Now please remember that with the enhanced for loop, this variable value, um, the value of each element is copied into that variable. The value being, for example, with the list on the board, 5, 13, 6, 3, it is not the indices. So please don't use the variable i here. I think that leads to confusion because we think of i as an index, and yet in this context, it's not. It's being used as a, um, the value of the actual elements. So we don't have to call the get method. We don't have to worry about indices. We can just say sum plus equals value and return it, return sum, and we're done. Um, so the enhanced for loop is really convenient when working with an array list. Let's actually add some code um, to the main method to actually call this and print out the sum um, so we can make sure it works. So I'm going to return the value returned by invoking the method sum list and passing our array. And when I run it now, not only are evens removed, but we also sum the values of the elements that are left in the list. Now there, there is a caveat with the enhanced for loop, and it's very similar to the caveat we had using enhanced for loops with arrays. 
Um, and that is while when we're iterating through an array or an array list, we can certainly call methods on the various elements and those methods can change the attributes of those objects. Like if we have a list of turtles, we can iterate through it with an enhanced for loop and, and make them all move or change their color. Um, but we cannot change, just like with arrays, we can't change the values in the array. With an array list, we cannot change the elements in the list. We can't change the list in any way. We can't add elements, we can't remove elements, we can't change the value of elements themselves. Um, and let's see what happens if we do, like if we accidentally do and we, what would happen? Let's actually add just a value at the end. Oh, I didn't mean Y, sorry. Seven, seven works. Just some value. And if I run this again, we get a concurrent modification exception. Um, when something is concurrent, that means there are multiple things going on at the same time. In this case, there's multiple pieces of code that are modifying the list. The way an enhanced for loop works is that as it iterates through the list, there's code we can't see that's basically keeping track of where, what index are we currently at, where are we going next, what's the size of the list, all of that type of stuff. Um, and if while that code is running, we add or remove or change elements in the list, we're going to mess up that iterator. Um, and so if Java detects that we have done this, it generates, uh, it throws a concurrent modification exception because it's not going to work. Um, so just keep this in mind. Certainly, whenever you don't care about the indices and whenever you don't need to add or remove from the list, definitely use an enhanced for loop. Super convenient, less likely to have bugs. Um, but if you do care about indices or you are modifying the list in some way, you got to stick with the traditional for loop. Um, and then you have to be more careful about those indices, much like we were um, in the previous method when we were removing evens. So let's comment this out so our code doesn't crash. There we go. So now we have several examples here um, of all the array list methods.